I'm John C. Boston II, the Associate Director at the North American Division Evangelism Institute. I am elated that we're here together to talk about something that is critically important. We're talking about dealing with objections to baptism. One of the first things I want to underscore is that if you are in this to win converts to your local church, you will lose every time. Why? Because the Holy Spirit works when we are calling people into an abiding relationship with Jesus Christ. You and I both know that consistently over and over again, preachers and the church will fail humanity. But what we need to be sure of is that when we've connected people to the clear voice of the Holy Spirit in their lives, that is the only one that will never fail them. So the first thing you've got to do when you're uh, dealing with someone that's objecting to baptism is you're asking God to make sure you're connecting them with his voice, not your voice, not your strategy, not your plan, not your antics. We want to make sure you're hearing God's voice. The first and best way to do that is to point them to scripture. Oftentimes when I talk with people in their homes, whether I'm working in an evangelistic meeting with Dr. Ron Smith or Dr. Carlton Bird, I'm talking with people in their homes. And while I'm there, I'm listening to what God is saying to me first. And I'm asking him, show me what needs to be said next. There are opportunities that reflect consistent principles every single time I go out. One of those is make sure you point them to the word of God. I use stories like the story of Naaman. Was Naaman cured of leprosy simply because he believed? No, he had to act on the belief. He had to enter into that covenant that I'm going to trust you and trust your word. And so I point people to the word. What does God's word say? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. What does God's word say that we are to be a part of a fellowship? And here's a few scriptures I'm putting up on the screen that you want to point people to. Let the word of God speak, okay? Second, principle that comes up consistently when dealing with objections to baptism, people say, I'm not ready. Guess what? You'll never be ready. You'll never be ready because ready is not about when you have gotten everything together. Ready is when you are surrendering all to him. Ready is when you recognize you are not together. So when someone says, I'm just not ready, the best and strongest response is you never will be. None of us ever will be. But in Christ, we are called to follow him and his word. And it is here that God does the work that only he can do for us. The third principle that's always at work when you're dealing with objections to baptism, people will often say, I don't know that I'm going to ever be able to live right. I want to make this decision, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to live right. You point them to scripture. You let them know that they're not ready now. And you remind them that every day we're dying to sin. You remind them that all of us like sheep have gone astray. This is a real conversation that happens. I have spoken with sex workers on, on city corners. I've spoken with drug addicts and drug dealers, men that are in abusive relationships with their partners, women in abusive relationships with their partners, and consistently over and over again, this is the response. I'm not ready. I'm not sure about this. I don't know that I can actually live a righteous life. And the response is always going to be, you will not be able to. This is why you take this first great step to surrender to Christ. And in saying yes to the voice of the Holy Spirit, now you will understand by and by how to have the faith and the strength in him to say yes every time he calls you. This is your opportunity to start saying yes to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I got a call the other day. Bible worker working in a public evangelistic meeting. And she and her husband said, John, what do we do? We have people that, that are saying that they're ready. They're saying they want to participate, but I just feel like they need to be encouraged over the line. Well, the line is not baptism. That is a great metric or measure for us to know that the Holy Spirit is moving. But like the story of Zacchaeus, you know that the Holy Spirit moves on people in ways that we don't fully understand and in ways that are not fully clear to us. 
And so you're looking for the Zacchaeus out there. You're looking for those persons that the Holy Spirit is speaking to. Never get caught up in the notion that you're going to go out, do a work, and bring people in. I know we like to sing, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, but the harvest belongs to the Lord. So let's role play here for a moment. I'm the person who wants to be baptized. This is what I'm going to say to you. I'm just not ready right now. My dear friend, you never will be. Readiness is in Jesus Christ. You present scripture and, and this is what you're letting them know that here now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. We are in trouble in the West, particularly here in North America, because if you notice our language, we're slowly, if not more rapidly, I should say, moving away from the gospel appeal, asking people to make a decision. And then when we talk to people in their home, we communicate something that is a gross error. We say we have more time, no need to rush. The fourth thing I want to reveal to you is that you have to express the urgency of the matter. You, we cannot on one hand say that we are nearing the second coming of Jesus Christ. And then on another hand, say we have more time. There's no rush. There is something urgent about asking people to make a decision. Today is the day that that decision needs to be made because the human heart grows colder every single day. Every time we make an appeal, we have to press in that this is the best opportunity to decide to follow Jesus Christ. Someone says, I need more time. You need to remind them that you've had as much time as you've had. There is no assurance that you will have more time in the future. Not because you'll go out and get hit by a bus. No, but because the voice of the Holy Spirit gets more quiet in the life of the person that does not respond when they hear that voice for the first time. It's critically clear for you to understand that you must underscore the urgency of the matter. Jesus is soon to come. As a matter of fact, I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the cry. What I'm saying to you is that you have to underscore the urgency of the matter. Jesus is coming soon. We must make a decision today. A fifth principle that's at work when people are trying to make a decision is that they don't have the support of their loved ones or the people that are in their support network. You've got to remind them, pointing back to the word of God, we have to be willing to follow Christ no matter what happens around. I remember the story of a young Nikki who in Guyana, South America, while I was doing an evangelistic meeting there, his parents told him, if you decide to be baptized, you will be put out of this house. And at 12 years old, Nikki still decided to be baptized. I'm sorry, he wasn't 12, he was 14 years old. At 14 years old, Nikki decided to still be baptized. I encouraged Nikki to actually hold off because I, did, I knew the church local didn't have a place to support him. Well, and Nikki deciding to be baptized. His father came in and said, go ahead and pack your things. You're getting out of this house. Nikki began to gather what little things he thought he could take with him. And his father said, why would you leave this house for a God you can't even see? And in those moments, Nikki was able to share everything he heard in that evangelistic meeting. He talked about the urgency and the nearness of the coming of Christ. He talked about scripture. He told stories of Zacchaeus and, and Naaman. And he, he began to unearth for his father the revelation that occurred in his heart. And his father and mother came with him that Sabbath morning just at the final appeal before we went to the water. And they also responded to be baptized as well. When I asked them, what changed your heart? They said, we changed our minds because we saw that the Holy Spirit had done something in Nikki that we needed done in our lives. You got to remind people when you stand for Christ, he will stand for you. And so my big question before I close out these few minutes with you, my big question to you is what prevents us from making the appeal? What prevents us from dealing with the objection? It is our fear of failure. Do not be afraid to fail if someone says no. Why? Because it is not your success. It is the success of heaven. God has, though, asked us to be faithful. We have to make the gospel call. We have to go and teach and baptize. Even in the Lucan Commission, we have to participate and be participants in the gospel ministry of Jesus Christ. And what did Jesus do when he met people? He met them where they were and he did not leave them there. So my dear friend, 
When you make the appeal, deal with the objections by pointing them to the scripture. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as he speaks. Press in the urgency of the matter. Remind them that if they stand up for God, God will stand for them. And underscore this simple truth that when you say yes to baptism, you give yourself the ability to give more yes to the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. Go and make disciples, make appeals, and let's do this great work because Jesus is soon to come and he wants us to ask people to be ready for his return.